On today's Maker Mashup, we have here a $100 printer from Amazon.com. We're gonna find out if we can actually make this thing work. All right, so today I've got my friend Nick here. He's gonna be helping us put together this uh, printer. So Nick, I got this from amazon.com for $110. It was literally the cheapest printer I could find. So I think the best part about this printer was when I was looking at this, now, now check this out. Um, when you look at it here, the laser machine was well configured and tested by our experienced, one word, <laughs> operator, ultimately ensure a perfect cut from design, one word, to acrylic pieces. So this clearly is a cheap printer manufactured in China. Uh, this currently looks like it has been dropped down several flights of stairs. Uh, when I when I got this, the Amazon box was a bit beat up, but even better, um, and this is a, a concern here, even better, I look at the top here and right there, return only not for sale. So mm -hmm. I don't know, we have not opened it up and this looks like this may have been a return. Um, I guess it could be overstock as well, but we don't, we don't know. The box actually, for being as beat up as it is, it doesn't look like it's been opened. And anybody that's put one of these together before knows that, you know, there's usually foam packaging. Um, so, and, and, you know, picking this up, I'm that not hearing any, tight. yeah, I'm not hearing anything rattle. So here we go. Let's open it up and see, see the tape doesn't exactly look reused. It looks like, it looks like it was sealed in the <laughs> traditional way oh, that they okay. come from China. It looks like there's some extra, you know, brown packing tape on here, but. Yeah. All right, so taking a look at this, you can see here, this this looks pretty well packed. I mean, this is, we have instructions. One of the reviews I saw uh, online here said that it came with no instructions. Um, so I think we're actually a leg up from one of the other reviewers. There's definitely instructions. This is. And a high quality eight gigabyte card. I didn't even know they still made those. So I, I think we stand a good chance. Now I did post on Twitter a poll to find out. Um, so we have a poll here on Twitter. Let's take a look at the poll. Um, I, I think most people thought we were gonna be okay. That was the big, <laughs> that was the big question, right? I think it'll be all right. I think the design looked reasonable. I think the Parts quality will be where it falls. Well, in. right. That's my, so that's it looks like it's a clone, right? As mm -hmm. most of these are. Um, but as I look at this here, uh, it looks like most people think that we should be okay. Uh, only a few people thought that it was going to be a train wreck. Uh, so I think, I think maybe we'll be okay here. So we're going to go ahead and start uh, unpacking this. That is, that is the end of our Christmas package here. So. That was really nice to get it. Right. Yeah. You gotta just throw it. I, I threw it. All right, so, <laughs> all right, so here's the thing. Right here, all things aside. So if this oh. printer, if this printer did not work right now and it, it, we couldn't get it together, couldn't get it to function, which I'm sure we will. But as it sits right here, the parts alone are worth more than a hundred dollars. So if if you wanted to build your own printer and you wanted to buy all the parts for it, you couldn't get it for a hundred dollars. I don't. This, is this for the bed? I. They thought of everything. everything. I mean, everything. other than the printer being in complete pieces, it gave you everything you need to print <laughs> to right out of the box. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, so we just spent the last hour put, taking all the backing paper off of here. And uh, while we were doing that, we we're having a few sidebar discussions, just kind of talking about the printer. And so far, everything that we've seen here, 
this is obviously not a beginner printer. So if you're brand new to 3D printing, you're gonna wanna steer clear of something like this. But if you're fairly handy and able to read directions, so far this printer seems pretty straightforward. We're gonna get to work here and we'll stop back in in a few minutes and show you where we're at. All right, so with uh, just a few minutes it took to put this together, and then we're ready to move on to the next step now that we have the basic frame put together. Uh, so far, pretty pretty solid frame. Yep, pretty sturdy, I agree. So next up, putting together motors. So the motor assembly went together pretty easily. We were able to get the motors attached to the acrylic plate without much trouble. However, the spacer that they wanted us to place here was actually a bit too big. We ran into trouble with the spacer. And when you put the motor into place here, what happened was is the motor would actually wiggle left and right. So this was surprisingly not the first problem we had with this printer assembly. So we decided the fix for this would be simply to go ahead and grind this down on my little Dremel tool. We then went ahead and put the Z axis in place on the left hand side. But here's what happened on the right hand. Oh, that lead screw just rubs right on that bolt head. That's fame. Oh, actually, you know what? No, it doesn't even go in. This, this can't work. Why? That, that head is literally right in the way. So the lead screw was stopped by the bolt they provided for us to go ahead and attach the pulley for the tensioner belt. Luckily, we had some spare screws around, so we got past this pretty quickly. What are you clearing for now? Boom, boom, boom. All right, so add that to the list. And the list just kept piling up. So we found a missing connector for the extruder motor here. So to save time, we decided to solder that directly to the motherboard. When we were doing some testing, we found out that all of the end stops were completely non-functional switches. So I had a few of those laying around and we quickly soldered those on. Wait, there's more. We went ahead and found out that the fans were all supposed to be tied together for all three of them. So the extruder didn't have its own separate fan for cooling. So we had to solder a couple of fans together here and one separate with its own connector to repurpose one of the 12 volt connections that were available on the motherboard and unused. So this was just sloppy work on their end. Luckily, I had a connector that we could just plug in. Eventually, the moment of truth came and we powered it on and surprisingly, it powered right up. This was not the end of our issues with this printer. The version of Marlin on this was a version 1.0 release candidate 2. So it was actually too old to run any G code from a modern version of Cura. The next step was to flash a bootloader on here and install the latest copy of Marlin. The motherboard does not contain header pins to install a bootloader. So what you're gonna have to do is use the ribbon cables that connect to the back of the display board. This is a fairly simple process and I linked the pins that you connect each one of them to in the description. Here you can see where I've got the Arduino connected to the ribbon cables. Just using some simple jumper wires will get the job done. Now we're gonna turn our Arduino into a programmer. You're gonna to wanna to go to the examples and then pick the Arduino ISP. This will load up the code that you're gonna program onto your Arduino. And those are the pins that we're gonna actually connect over to the ribbon cable. Once you have this sketch loaded, just burn it onto your Arduino. Once you have the programmer loaded, the next step is going to be to actually burn the bootloader. Before we do that, we're gonna to have to make sure that we have the Sanguino board. This can be downloaded from the internet within the IDE. You're gonna to wanna to go to the properties. And then within here, we're gonna to go to the board manager and I've linked this in the description. This is the URL that you're gonna to wanna to add so it downloads the appropriate Sanguina board. And then you're gonna to wanna to go to the board manager. 
And then if you type SAN, it will bring up that board and then you're going to want to install it. Once that's done, we just have a few settings to change here under tools. You know, click that and then you're going to go in here and we're going to set our board to the Sanguino board. It should be at the bottom. And then you're going to want to set this for the CPU second from the bottom, the 16 megahertz, and then the COM port that the Arduino is on. At this point, we'll be ready to burn the bootloader. Just click burn bootloader and presto. The last step is to download Marlin. Once you've downloaded Marlin, you're going to want to burn that onto the board itself. I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial, but I am going to include the configuration in the description. Teaching Tech has a great video, which I've linked in the description, which covers how to install Marlin. If you have more questions, feel free to join our Discord. Link for that is in the description. After you have Marlin installed, the next step is really to just print a test cube and level the bed. I suggest upgrading your bed to a glass plate or to some build tack. This is the glass bed that I put on and the link for this particular bed is in the description. The next upgrade is to create a box to go around the electrical. The mains here are exposed, so there is a risk of electric shock. I'm planning on putting a switch here as well. You can see here, this is in desperate need of cable management and I'll be building an enclosure to surround this as well. Okay, so we've spent a couple of days working on this printer. It's working great. I've uh, been able to print benches on it. They look pretty decent. And for the most part, it's a very usable printer. Uh, I think it's really lacking in a lot of quality. Um, I think there are areas that in particular that are pretty decent quality. I think these stepper motors are uh, really decent. The main board works fine. I really no problems with it. It's the same type of main board that you'll find in a uh, Ender 3, um, slightly different version, but basically the same one. Uh, also, it's got the display board here that worked fine. It was actually very helpful in being able to burn the firmware onto the motherboard. Uh, would have been helpful if they had some header pins on there, but all in all, I think as $100, this is a great printer. Now, I was able to find this online on Banggood and a couple of other places where they're still charging two, three, four hundred dollars in some cases if you Google this particular <laughs> model of printer. So they're out there selling this printer for four hundred dollars, and the company is out of business. I'm sure it's just stock that they're trying to get rid of, but. Overall, this printer is nowhere worth $400. And uh, Angus did a review on it a couple of years ago and basically said the same thing. So as I was researching this printer after we had it built, uh, just stumbled across a lot of different things about it. But basically, this is a kit printer. We knew that from the start. We knew we'd have to assemble it. And I think overall, the big key here is that if you know what you're doing and you know how to assemble a 3D printer, this is a great bargain at a hundred bucks. For $400 or a dollar more than a hundred dollars, yeah. I would say, no, it's not worth it. And if you wanted to go down the road of creating your own 3D printer and get rid of the acrylic and you know do it with 2020 um, extrusions, you could go down that route as well. The other thing that we found is it seemed to be missing parts. Missing parts were a big part of this as well. Um, and no indication, the instructions were completely useless. Um, just as one of the other reviewers said, uh, they were in the box, but they really weren't helpful at all. And the other big thing about this was um, you had no idea what any of the screws went to. So it was just simply trying to, mm -hmm. you know, put it together. Um, and you know, if you're competent, you can make this work. Uh, you certainly can, uh, if you're definitely a tinkerer. But if you want to pull this out of the box and be printing with it this weekend, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't yeah. go down that route. Yeah, and I think for an out of the box experience, um, especially with the firmware it comes with, um, there's potential that likely didn't have thermal runaway, any of that kind of stuff. So safety wise, you're kind of uh, in trouble. Um, and just feature wise, it was missing a lot of things. I mean, we, it came with a Marlin 1.0 release candidate. 
we've now put 119 on it, which is just has way more uh, stuff. I mean, it probably will make this printer a hundred times better than it would have been for the original $400 two years ago. So I think that's, that's another thing is if you do buy it, you can put the new firmware on there. You get a lot more functionality out of it. Um, so that, there's that. I, mean, I think it, it definitely helps. And yeah, it's I, not too hard to burn it. Like, you know, you can buy the cheap Arduino boards and yep, yep, burn we, the bootloader on it and you go. So, so yeah, I think, it, I think that's the big takeaway here mm -hmm. is that, you know, for $400, you do have a lot, or sorry, for a hundred dollars, you have a lot of work to do mm -hmm. uh, with this printer, but you know, great little tinker printer. Let's see some of the other things that we found on here. I heard reports of people that had uh, problems with the um, extruder portion here with the fan mounts mm -hmm. uh, of those melting. I heard those were all uh, yeah. different problems as well. I think to your point again, just to reiterate, yeah, it's, it's for tinkers and we like to tinker. So it was fun for us to put together and, you know, solve the problems that we ran into and got enough crap laying around to, to fix it. So I think it's, it's one of those things where if you've got experience, go ahead, I, but not something you buy your kid for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I, and, and that's the part that would be very disappointing, right? Is mm. if you, if you got a printer like this for your, for your child, um, maybe as an educational tool, yeah. but not as a, you oh, yeah. know, if you're gonna hey, it's a hundred bucks, I'll give this to somebody for their birthday oh, yeah. or Christmas, not a, or holiday or whatever. It's certainly not the right printer for that. All right, well, I think that's it for this video. If you liked what you saw here, please make sure that you mash that like button and then also make sure that you subscribe. If you're gonna attempt this or just wanna hang out with us, you can join our Discord where we can chat along and uh, discuss all the different projects that we're working on. So you can check that out on our website, which is makermashup.com. And you can check our Twitter as well, which is Maker Mashup. So, uh, I think that's everything for today. We will see you next time. Thanks, everyone.